about reward-based training because it's it's been fundamental to my training process. I was one of an early adopter, so I've been doing it for like 15 years. Um, I'm not a pure clicker trainer. Um, I have been showing over the past 15 years, so you have to be able to ride a horse traditionally, um, but I do use it a lot. My way of using it is really, and I have videos about this, about looking at the motivations and trying to motivate my horse for the things that I want. So I look at it very differently than just classical clicker trainers. I do not carry a clicker with me. I did in the beginning. I don't anymore. I do use a tongue cluck if I want to use, um, and if I actually want to use a marker. If you don't understand anything about um, clicker training or positive reinforcement or um, operant conditioning, because that's where it all comes from, then I suggest that you look into that because um, I don't really go over that in any of my videos. But I am going to start in these videos incorporating more and more of clicker training into my rides. And how I use it is I use it when I'm teaching something novel or difficult or new or um, clarifying something. And I use it as a yes signal. So I think there's a book out there called Getting to Yes, which is really good about explaining this yes signal. And that's what I use the clicker as. And so in instances of, um, if I, you know, so I, I very quickly get away from the, the positive reinforcement for something that's an established behavior. So I am not one that's going around and just clicking, stopping, treating, clicking, stopping, treating, clicking, stopping, treating, like repetitively. I am using it for the thing that I'm teaching the horse that day that is not an established behavior. So that would mean for my three-year-old that I just started, um, you know, that is like, oh, you let me lay over the back. <laughs> it's click and treat, right? But obviously like for him, we have a stink bug hanging out. Um, obviously for him, right, I'm not going to use it for that because he's been, you know, under saddle now for seven years, seven years. Yeah. I think we're going on six or seven years. So obviously he doesn't need to be rewarded for letting me get on his back. Okay. But I do try and pick that their job is rewarding. So I do incorporate a lot of things into my rides that, um, are rewarding to them. And that's where I talk about the motivations. We're not going to get into that here, but I do want to talk about a little bit of just how I use it in riding because it's, I'm going to start incorporating in my rides more in the videos. I always incorporate it in my rides and I want you to be aware of what I'm doing. So that's why I'm doing this short little video. So the, the deal is with me is if I'm doing something that is new and I want them to have a yes, that that's what I wanted. That's what I was asking. That's when I will use the clicker. So I'm trying to think of an example with this guy, like when I was teaching him the flying changes, that was for sure. Um, something that when, you know, and, and your criteria goes up. So in the beginning, you know, I'm teaching him a flying change. I just want him to attempt to change. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's like, that's what we're going for. You know, we're going for you to do a change, you know, even if he didn't get it quite right. And then the criteria gets a little bit more specific. Um, and you can pick anything and the minutest little thing. Maybe you just need your, your half hot on your left rein to be a little bit better. Um, and then when he does it really well, you click and treat. And, and I, then I very quickly phase out. You know, I might repeat that over a, a week or so or whatever it takes them to get that. But once it's established behavior and they understand that's the yes, then I will phase it out and we move on to the next thing. 
that I want to teach them. So I use it quite differently than other people. I think it integrates really well into anybody who wants to, you know, use negative reinforcement. So it wants to use pressure and release to ride, but also wants to incorporate positive reinforcement. I am not a person that um, is just positive. I'm just I'm not. Uh, um, I just, you know, I use my leg to get them to go forward. That's pressure and release. Um, so that's what I just wanted to say about that, which this isn't really a demo video. Um, but I, you will start seeing that in the in my stuff. And I just wanted you to understand why it is the way that it is, because it is different from everybody else. And I will start talking about my motivations or the horse's motivations in the moment. And because I ask myself all the time, like, why would my horse want to do this? Um, that's one of my big things. Why would my horse want to do this? And how can I have him want to do this more? Um, and because, you know, sometimes the work is hard and I don't, want to, I'm not at the place yet where I'm just going to be like, well, you guys get to live in the pasture because, you know, that's like what's easiest for you. Um, they have a job. I have a job. Um, and, but I do want to, you know, really mindfully regard the fact that they're letting me ride them, that they're working for me and that sometimes the work is hard and that I need to make it as rewarding to them as possible part of that is clicker training, but clicker training and food is not all of it because that is the, that is the, that's just one little piece. And I think what I always get discouraged about with operant conditioning is people are not, they're, they're, you know, learning, learning clicker training is super easy. Being really good at incorporating into your training program, not so much. And so there's a lot of people that do really, really, really poor training with it um, because they learned how to clicker train, but they didn't really understand the um, philosophy behind the training. And that's where I go with it because I'm really starting to build motivations. I use, when I'm riding with a bit, I use sugar cubes. If you're really concerned about the amount of sugar your horse is eating, um, you know, they have alternatives to sugar cubes. But I just have sugar cubes. They're always in my pocket. They're always on hand if I need them. Of course, if you guys are familiar with operant conditioning, um, there are secondary reinforcers that you can charge. And they do mean something to my horse. So there is things that mean stuff to my horse. If I, for instance, run out of a, tr uh, a sugar cube or a treat, or I don't have any other way of actually rewarding them, a secondary reinforcer will work. But just realize that it loses its potency if it's not followed up with a primary reinforcer. So that's what I have to say today about reinforcers. Okay, that's it, guys. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below because it's a little bit of a tricky subject. You'll learn more as you watch uh, subsequent videos. But um, yeah, please post your comments or questions or anything down below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Okay, thanks guys. See you next time.